Hello and welcome to another edition of Bad Left Hook Commentary. I am your host, Connor Rebush, and here with me is Kyle McLaughlin, both of us representing, as the name implies, BadLeftHook.com. We are bringing you another opportunity to watch a fantastic international bout with English commentary today. We are viewing Guillermo Rigondeau defending his WBO Super Bantamweight title against Hisashi Amagasa. And as the bell rings, Kyle, why don't you tell us a little bit about these fighters that we're watching right here today? Well, on paper, Connor, it certainly appears to be a mismatch. Uh, Rigondeau is one of the most lauded pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the sport with a glittering amateur career and the perceived lineal champion at Super Bantamweight, whereas Amagasa is pretty much an unknown quantity. He has one bout over a fringe world-level guy in uh, Rioli Lee, who's a former WBA Super Bantamweight titleist, uh, a very good fighter in his own right. But other than that, he's been... On the, uh, the Japanese domestic scene, he holds the Japanese featherweight title and the OBPF championship. But this is actually his first bout down at Super Bantamweight. And as we can see from the early going, the size difference is humongous. It's tremendous. If I'm not mistaken, Amagasa stands at a, a towering 5'11". There is Rigondeau lands a straight left lead on him. And it's not often, Kyle, that you see a bout like this in which the substantially smaller fighter is the one controlling and maintaining the distance. It, it uh, reminds you of great boxers like Miguel Canto. It does indeed. And another guy, a very good shout there, Connor, a man who was always at a size disadvantage. Um, it almost it also calls bouts that uh, modern viewers may be more uh, familiar with, uh, bouts such as Manny Pacquiao versus Chachai Sasakal, where the size difference was vast. In that bout, the bigger guy eventually won, but the smaller guy was dictating the range for, for much of the bout. We'll have to see if that's the same pattern that emerges here today. It looks like classic Rigondeau so far as the uh, fight reaches the halfway point of the first round. Rigondeau, of it's course... It's to be expected. Right, and of course, a very experienced, a little bit of a low blow there on Amagasa. But uh, Rigondeau, of course, a very experienced... Amateur fighter, more importantly, in my view, an experienced Cuban fighter and really espouses in his style all of the things that make the Cuban system so special and so impressive in the sport of boxing. Uh, definitely. As you touched on there, he was a fantastic amateur and he looks a fantastic pro so far. He really has seen fighters of all shapes, sizes and styles, so I don't expect Amagasa to be too much of an issue for him, even though he does appear to be the much larger fighter. Nice straight left to the body there from Rigondeau. Good and uppercut. Again. Amagasa comes back with a counter, but uh, Rigondeau really is, is having no difficulty dodging all of these counters. And already, it looks like Amagasa is starting to run out of ideas, as it were. He is. He's relying on catching Rigondeau as he comes out after landing his own shots. And as you can see there, Rigondeau is just too fast for him, too much of a mass or of range. He steps in, he steps to the side, and Amagasa... It cannot hear him. He's trying to throw a bag of bag of rice at him and not even landing a single grain. <laughs> Apt comparison. And uh, credit to Amagasa. He he is the deserved underdog here, end of the first round. But he he threw back. He he's coming at Rigondeau more than much higher ranked fighters have in uh, recent years. Of course, there was the fight against Agbeko, which turned out to be terribly boring. Hardly any fault of Rigondeau's because uh, Agbeko was just too timid to walk into the wood chipper that is Rigondeau's counter punching game. Indeed, it almost appears that Amagasa's naivety here is allowing him to operate a bit more aggressively than Agbeko. Agbeko's experience probably allowed him to think or to know that he had no chance if he opened up, so he was very defensive for the whole fight. Whereas Amagasa is, he has a bit of youthful exuberance to him, but he, and he, he is trying. Nice jab to the body there from Amagasa. There's just so many layers of defense to Guillermo Rigondeau's style. You know, he, he can respond with his hands and block punches with his gloves and forearms like he does there with his raising up his jab hand to catch the left hook before it can land. Then he's got his footwork to control the distance, and we'll see him using his hips beautifully to slip from one side to the other and create distance even without having to move his feet. There's just so many different answers as he catches as he catches Amagasa with a bit of a check hook there. So many answers that he has offensively and defensively to any threat. It makes him almost impossible to figure out. Indeed, he is a multi-layered fighter and, and although a lot of people don't believe that Rigondeau is that exciting to watch for the purest 
Uh, there really is a lot that you can take from watching his style. If you see him there, he, slip, he slips the punches and he's back out. And Amagasa couldn't hit him when he was stationary. He couldn't hit him when he was moving. And he just looks basically untouchable at this point of the game. But it is still early. That being said, I, I think Amagasa is doing the right things here. He, despite being the taller fighter, I think he's wisely working off of his jab and closing distance and throwing combinations. Too many fighters get Rigondeau with a beautiful combination there. Left straight upstairs, right to the body. But uh, Amagasa's fighting in spots, but when he does, he's doing the right things. He's, he's stringing his punches together and not backing off. I mean, that right there is what he needs, even though he was unsuccessful with countering. He needs to stay in the pocket. Here's some, some decent work from him. You're absolutely right there, Connor. You cannot allow Rigondale to operate at his own range, but you cannot run in senselessly either. You need to show him something, even if it's a jab that doesn't land. Uh, Amagasa, obviously, is a much bigger guy, and even if he can obscure Rigondale's vision for a moment to get closer, you see there, he got close, he didn't get anything on Rigondale, but he can't run in, because that's what, that is Rigondale's game. If you notice against a similarly overmatched fighter in Willie Casey, who charged Rigondale, he just destroyed him inside a round, and Amagasa was already better at that performance. Tion Kennedy comes to mind as well, another fighter who was timid and yet found that his only possible solution was to run at Rigondeau and ended up walking into counter shot after counter, counter shot until being stopped in the fifth round. Amagasa tried a bit of cuteness there and that, that really isn't going to work. He really has to impose his will on Rigo, as cliched as it sounds, as we go into the third round now. He hasn't had much success. His only chance of success is to force Rigondeau out of his comfort zone and it's hard to do because he seems to be comfortable all ranges wouldn't you say agreed and and i don't i don't think that um nice exchange there but amagasa got some shots in. he's i think if he can convince rigondeau to trade he'll have a better chance but i don't, I don't want to fall into the cliche of saying that to beat a boxer like rigondeau you can't box with him it's just that amagasa needs to box in a very specific style to keep rigondeau from doing what he does best there needs to be pressure. I mean, right now, he's still getting hit with counters, but this pressure with this jab, constantly staying on his man, that's what he's going to need to do, and he's 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 turning in a creditable performance so far, despite being such a huge underdog here. Well, he definitely has the background uh, to pressurize Rigo, because as we know, many of the great Japanese stylists have pressured behind a very consistent jab, and although he hasn't quite mastered that, uh, he is trying it, as we can see, he's flicking it out there and just trying to get Rigo to move into certain positions, which go to show that although he may be overmatched, he's not completely out of his depth here. And it, it is giving Rigondeau, looks like a low blow there, but it's giving Rigondeau the opportunity to display some of his combination punching skills. He's often a fighter who resorts to pot shotting on the outside, but with an aggressive opponent, it's, uh, it seems to be bringing the best out of both fighters here today. This has been an entertaining bout so far. Definitely, and if you see the bouts that Rigondeau has been criticised for, they come against Agbeko, who, as we've already alluded to, was a very negative uh, fighter in, in that bout in particular. And also Nonito Donaire, who is a pure counterpuncher, who was not able to take the lead himself. And it, that both of those bouts were basically an exhibition of Rigondeau's skills, and they weren't really much of a contest. Uh, for the majority of the don't air bout anyway. Look at this hip movement here, this is what I mean. With no difficulty whatsoever in getting that low and, and it requires such small movements to avoid the punches of Amagasa. A couple shots landed maybe on the top of the head there, but uh, Rigondeau really just putting on a clinic of the Cuban boxing style here. And also, one thing we need to take into account, which we may not have touched on yet, is that Amagasa, although he has got a size advantage, he has spent all of his career, as far as I'm aware, at featherweight. And although it may not seem like a lot, maybe cutting four pounds uh, from that frame may have weakened him somewhat. So it'll be interesting to see if he can keep up this style for much longer. Excellent point. He's already a large featherweight. It's not like he was small for his former weight division, so cutting four pounds when you're already likely cutting a, a, a substantial amount of water weight to make the featherweight limit has got to take its toll. Definitely. At Super Bannerweight, he reminds me very much of Dave McCauley, who was a similarly large-framed uh, fighter and flyweight champion back in the late 80s. Um, and he, he looks huge here, but as we've already said, look, if you see there, he tries to get Rigondeau, he gets hit, and Rigondeau very cleverly ties him up before he can 
pressure him any further. There was a telling there was a telling moment there at the end of the round though. It did look like Amagasa had the strength advantage. He was able to muscle Rigondel around a little bit. Now we start the fourth round. I uh, I have to say that every round so far has been Rigondel's, but Amagasa's turning in uh, a better performance than could have been expected. He's he's not looking completely outclassed here or, or even when he is being outclassed. He's not given up. Like many Japanese fighters, Connor, as you know, this guy will be game till the end. And something I've noticed that Rigondeaux has started to do is, uh, having begun the bout at his range, he's started to tactically close the distance in order to take away Amagasa's reach before then pivoting out and taking another angle. So when Amagasa appears to be getting just a little too close for comfort, Rigondeaux will step in, as he's doing here, and then uh, there the referee breaks him up, but previously he was able to take angles off of that and reclaim the center of the ring. Definitely. He's forcing Amagasa to reset whilst knowing where he himself is going to end up. So Amagasa is playing catch up here, and, and this is pretty much vintage Rigondel. Looked like Rigondel bobbed under a body hook there. That's not something you typically see from fighters. Well, we've seen a few low punches from Rigondel here, and I think it's a bit unfair to him because if he's hitting Amagasa low, that's pretty much normal head height for most of his previous <laughs> opponents. So, Very good point. Some heated exchanges here. Amagasa is really putting on the pressure. He's getting hit on the way in, but this is exactly what you'd like to see. You know, he's not uh, he's not taking a payday here. He's hoping to take that WBO belt. And the lineal belt. We should mention that Guillermo Rigondeaux is one of nine recognized lineal champions in the world, having become the lineal champion of Super Bantamweight division when he defeated Nonita Donaire in 2012. They were ranked number one and two at the time. And so they filled the vacant belt with the winner of that bout. Indeed, and Amagasa isn't just taking on the lineal Super Bantamweight champion. He, he's coming up against one of the guys who is seen as one of the true, if not all-time greats of this era, and certainly one of the truly great talents of this era, and arguably one of the greatest amateur boxers of all time. And he really isn't as seasoned as, as Rigondeaux. He's getting through on this bout so far on pure heart and will alone. And he's making a pretty good fight of it. He hasn't had too much success so far. But you can't really expect to have much success against a fighter of Rigondeaux's quality. So I think he's making a good show of it so far. And right here, see, the more punches that Amagasa throws, the better his success is. When Rigondeaux is using his hips and moving around on the inside, he sometimes seems to fall into a pattern of, of going on the defense too much going to the well too many times in a row as it were and uh, the more punches that Amagasa throws and here he's very smartly going to the body Amagasa is having some decent success in this round definitely and one thing we need to take into account is that Rigondeau is very much a by the book kind of fighter and someone fighting someone like Amagasa who's a bit awkward with his height and also with the way he's throwing his punches you, you don't get prepared for that in a textbook. Although we said earlier that Rigondeaux has seen all types of styles, this is a fight and anything can happen. And uh, Amagasa is certainly showing himself to be more than the sum of his parts on paper. Still, I think, four rounds to Rigondeaux. I don't think Amagasa's done quite enough yet to win a round. 100%. He's in good company there. We get to see here some of the little dirty tricks that Rigondeau uses as well as he grabs the back of Amagasa's head and lands an uppercut. And he looks like he dazed Amagasa there with the left hand. And he is going to town on the Japanese fighter. He is not letting up. It almost... Yeah, he has let up now. Amagasa with a show of bravado oh. there. And I think Rigondeau maybe thinks he should pace himself a bit better. It's almost as if Rigondeau didn't like how strongly Amagasa was coming on in round four and decided to teach him a lesson to start around five, but may have gotten a little reckless there. And definitely, uh, we've seen it before. Rigondeau, we've been espousing the the excellence of his style and all of his skills, but we need to remember that he, he has been hurt by lower level fighters than himself, although everybody is. Uh, Maroquin uh, hurt him, buzzed him. He was dropped by former champion Cordoba, what appeared to be a, a glancing shot. Um, and basically, Rigondeau's one downfall it appears is that he can be if not badly hurt and definitely stung or rocked and Amagasa is certainly looked to punch her at a lower level at the Japanese domestic scene admittedly it's a strong domestic scene and Amagasa can whack a little bit and Rigondeau's gone back on the defensive here 
though he's landing some nice counters here and there. But but as I said before, Amagasa seems to have his best success when he can force Rigondeau to go on the defensive and make four, five, six defensive movements in a row. Each each successive slip or roll or step away starts to grind away at the effectiveness of Rigondeau's defense and leave him open to the next shot in the combination. So Amagasa really needs to put some more combination punches on Rigondeau because despite that shot earlier in the round, he's not having near the success that he had at the end of the fourth. Definitely, he needs to use his combinations as if it were an extended feint. And f notice Rigondeau's patterns when defending his own shots and use them again to move Rigondeau into a different shot. Whether he's got that in his arsenal or not and that uh, offen uh, offensive diversity, I'm not quite sure. But so far, he's trying hard, he's getting close, but he's not close enough. Rigondeau using some flashy footwork here against the ropes, sort of playing with Amagasa. Of course, we've seen him get caught doing this before, getting a little too confident in his own abilities, or perhaps even bored with his opponents at times. When he made that step he made just there, crossed his feet, and then cut to a different angle, that is when uh, uh, Roberto Marroquin managed to drop him. So he needs to be careful doing that against a guy who has proven to be a tough opponent and who we know can punch. Definitely, but uh, as we know, punching at a lower level and punching at world level is a very, very different thing indeed. And it remains to be seen whether Amagasa can even hit Rigondeau, let alone hurt him. But he is trying, and he is game. It is a cliche to say so, but this this chap is very much a game fighter, and he doesn't look to have any quit in him. Absolutely. This is what he needs. He lands a body shot there on Rigondeau, and that right hand of the body may have landed as well. The more punches he can string together, the more defensive options he can force Rigondeau to use, the better his chances are of, of kind of showing that boxing computer that is Rigondeau's brain a, uh, a program it doesn't understand. Nice right uppercut to the body there from Amagasa. Rigondeau showing off his defensive skills, but he's going to need more than defense if he wants to win a fight. Definitely. He's definitely well up on rounds at the moment, but as we know, judges can never be trusted. It may well be that they are favoring. Amagasa is the home fighter, and he's also the more aggressive fighter. And we have seen many instances where the, the fighter la uh, dictating the range and the pace of the bout and landing the much cleaner shots is not given the nod by the judges. And Amagasa is throwing a lot of lever and it may well be that the judges are seeing it differently to us. I see it five rounds to nil for Rigondeau at the moment, but Amagasa is still in there. Absolutely. And, I, you know, it, it's hard watching this as objectively as possible to give these rounds to Amagasa, but it's also hard just to uh, discredit him. And, and I think he may be winning this round so far. Rigondeau's landed some clean shots, but hasn't really thrown enough back. And Amagasa's actually staying close enough to him to, to, uh, to nullify the long-range punches, which is really what Rigondeau does best. And these combinations think, are working for him. I think he may have timed it with a, a straight right there. It, did, it only appeared to be a glance of blow. I couldn't quite see from the angle we're seeing it at, but it did look like Amagasa was getting closer there. He's mixing it up. He's throwing straighter punches now. That certainly wasn't one. No. But he needs to mix up his approach uh, because it's, if you if you keep things the same, Rigondeau, as you say, he's a boxing computer. It does not take him long to figure you out. Nice straight right hand there. Lands semi-clean. Rigondeau responds with a looping left hand of his own. But uh, Amagasa is not shying away. I think uh, if Rigondeau doesn't do something dramatic, this may be the first Amagasa round of the fight. I think he might have evened it up a bit later on in the round. I don't tend definitely. to score even rounds myself, but definitely Rigondeau landed the cleanest shots at the beginning, and he appears to be as we move towards the end. Uh, but as we say, we never know how the judges are going to score things, and Amagasa had a very good middle portion of the round. And Rigondeau appears to be in autopilot here. Nice little flurry there. That might have stole the round for him. Nice body shots, left hand upstairs, downstairs. When Rigondeau gets the space and the time to put his tricks together, it really is. You get to see the true depth of his arsenal. And a beautiful he's southpaw cross beautiful. counter there. I, I, I'm tempted to give the round to Amagasa, but I, I, I suspect I'm falling prey to a little underdog bias here, just being so impressed with what Amagasa was able to do against a boxer of uh, Guillermo Rigondeau's quality so I'm gonna say that that was Amagasa's first round but um, I, to me it's effectively a split round I'm gonna disagree with you there Connor I do believe that Rigondeau the last 30 seconds especially of the sixth round he landed a lot of quality and he was really bossing the range and the pace we see him try to do the same thing here he wasn't quite successful there but really 
his defensive skills, although he can be caught, when he's on point, Rigon Dow's defensive skills are, are pretty much unparalleled in the sport of boxing today. Uh, we will look at guys like Floyd Mayweather, uh, and there aren't many guys like him, I should say a guy like Floyd Mayweather, but Rigon Dow really is right up there in terms of pure boxing skills and technique. No argument there. You can see how impressive Rigondeau is, as I said before, moving around within his stance earlier in the round, and he's done it a lot in this fight. He'll plant his feet, but then shift his weight back over his rear leg, and his feet will be in the way of Amagasa, but his head will be too far away so that Amagasa will be stuck throwing repeat punches, none of which land. He, he can't reach Rigondeau despite having his foot right next to him. In fact, we're seeing Rigondeau use a lot of the same techniques himself. In fact, because Amagasa is becoming a bit more predictable for him now, you're seeing Rigondeau using some predictable techniques. He's turning off to the right, he's hitting him to the body, and as he turns off to the right, he's, he's throwing a hook to the head, and he seems to have no problem landing it. Amagasa has not figured him out yet. Rigondeau is just circling him. You notice, especially when he comes to this corner here, doesn't use the same technique he may do. But this is where Rigondeau has also gotten in trouble in the past. When he's gotten into this kind of rhythmic outfighting, he, he understands the fundamentals so well that he's confident in being able to abandon them to execute certain movements and will allow his feet to get out of position as he circles, crossing his feet, jumping up in the air, things like that, which can leave him vulnerable if Amagasa can land the right shot at the right time. Beautiful combination punching from Rigondeau there, though. Definitely, and the, and the problem is with ringing down, you can time him with a perfect shot, and he can still slip it masterfully. So, absolutely, it, he is a very slippery guy, as many Cubans are. Uh, there must be something in the water over there, or at least, certainly, <laughs> they've got a lot of brilliant trainers out there. It's that ex Soviet system, nobody does amateur boxing like the Soviets. Oh, and Amagasa drops Rigondeau as he stands up tall, exiting from the inside. Wow, it seems to me like Rigondeau. We were just saying it, but it looks like Rigondeau turned himself into that punch. I need Absolutely. to see a replay, Hopefully, but it looks yeah. to me like Rigondeau turned a bit too much. He doesn't look particularly hurt. But he's shaken by oh, those he... punches. Absolutely hurt by those two. And another one. And Rigondeau looked like he was thrown to the ground there, but this may in fact help him having gone down because I think he might need some time to recover. He's protesting, he... but I really think he may benefit from this, from this additional count because he was hurt by three or four clean punches in that exchange. Definitely, they look like kind of scuffing arm punches. I'm not sure whether the, fir the first knockdown looked clean, but it didn't appear to have hurt him. Maybe it did, or maybe the arm punches or the short punches that Amagasa hit him with shook him up, because to me, I'm with you there. He got thrown down, but Rigondeau looked very hurt there, very shook up, very very similar to the American fight. No replay for us, unfortunately. We'll have to wait till the end of the fight and hope they sneak it in then. But uh, really shocking turn of events, and Rigondeau is now doing, as I said before, really trying to forcibly close the distance because he got, at trouble, got in trouble there at mid-range. He was trying to clinch and couldn't and uh, got hurt while he was out of position. But he's going, uh, he's going pretty rough with Amagasa right now, maybe trying to teach him a lesson again. I'm actually surprised, Connor, that he hasn't reset and gone back to what he was doing earlier because Amagasa actually did hurt him more on, in close on the inside, I, I believe. Excellent so, point. Maybe Rigo's more confident than he appears. Oh. He is going to war with him here. He is trading big left hands. Amagasa with the left hook. Rigonda with the overhand left. Clean shot there. Amagasa keeping his gloves up now. It's probably a smart decision. This is not a first time occurrence. Uh, if you remember in the Nonita Donaire fight, Another I believe in the 10th right. round when Donaire hit him with his best shot of the entire fight. That is actually what woke Rigondeau up, and he went to war with Donaire in much the similar manner here. It seems like his pride, or his, or his machismo, or machismo, I'm not quite sure how you would say that. We don't tend to say it over in England. <laughs> I believe it was hurt, and I believe Rigo does have a point to prove. That might end up being his undoing in the future, I believe. It's hard to believe that a fighter with such an emotionless mask in all of his fights can fight emotionally, but it does seem to be the case here. It may also be a tactical decision, you know, at a certain point, you've got to fight to convince the opponent that he can't continue to beat you up, especially after a pair of knockdowns like the ones he suffered in round seven. And Rigondeau seems to be breaking Amagasa a little bit. It, it may, in fact, be working. Nice left hand around Amagasa's lazy uppercut there. Another it's got to be inside. disheartening to celebrate a knockdown like you've won the fight and then have the guy come back even stronger in the next round. Absolutely. And Amagasa's 
right orbital bone is swelling up badly. He may have fractured something around his eye socket there, one of those Rigondeaux uppercuts or wide left hands. And this is starting to look once again like the clinic that we were seeing in rounds one through four. For the fight fan, it's certainly a, a treat to be to see Rigondeau opened up like this and forced to show something else which is in his toolbox. But from Rigondeau, he's got to feel like he's kicking himself a bit because he was putting on another perfect performance. On the other side of things, a lot of people have, as we said earlier, criticised him for being a little bit too cerebral in there. Perhaps he wanted something like this. Perhaps he wanted to be brought out of his shell and to put on a a show for the for the fans this is being shown on national tv in, in japan it's going to be watched by many millions of people and there's no better way to announce yourself to a new audience than to operate like this absolutely and you kind of need you know especially for rigandau he needs opponents like amagasa he may not be the top ranked contenders but as we know none of the top fighters in the division are willing to fight rigandau right now so the next best option for him is a gritty tough young fighter who is not afraid to throw down with somebody of Rigondeaux's caliber and Amagasa has proven himself a very game opponent so far though I think Rigondeaux uh, shifted the momentum of the fight back into his favor with that with that big uh, hard one comeback definitely uh, it says a lot for Amagasa that the one round he's won is most likely a 10-7 round yes. because he, he does deserve it for the guts that he's that he's proven he has here but as you just said, Rigondeau is way back on top now. He's firmly in control of the belt. And it may be my imagination, but Amagasa does not look as confident as he was before. Though these combination punches still coming. His expression, he does it, and he makes it up to the body well there as well. His expression, however, uh, looks a little more worried than it did even in the first six rounds when he was being beaten. And we just saw Amagasa slip a shot and take a backward step. He hasn't done that very often during this bout so far. So maybe he is thinking more along the lines of self-preservation now. And Rigodeau might get himself in trouble there. We saw it again where he'll close the distance and then sort of push off with both hands and back away standing tall. He effectively leaves himself defenseless. And we'll see in the replay if that's the case. But I believe that's what got him caught in the seventh round and that was also what what got him knocked down in his fight with Onito Donaire when he closed the distance and just sort of stepped out of stance with his head straight up in the air and his knees unbent and just couldn't absorb the shot that Donaire threw at him when he gets surprised in that position he can be hurt when he stays nice and low like this and keeps his hips engaged he's almost impossible to hurt and and, and generates a pretty incredible power for his frame as well definitely and I do believe as well that Rigo, for all of his skills and the fact that his chin isn't quite the best, he is a pure fighter and he does like to get involved. He, as we said earlier, he sees anybody landing a shot on him as a dent in his pride. And I think that he's a guy that if you engage him, he's going to engage you right back, which is why I do not quite understand the perception of him as a boring fighter, he as we previously said. He enjoys a challenge. I think that I think that Rigo does. And I think he... You know, I may be reading into it a bit, but I think that Rigondeaux was a bit disappointed when he fought Nonito Donaire. I think he expected a war, and much of that fight was Donaire allowing himself to be outclassed. And Rigondeaux faced that a lot in his career and has done it to such a convincing extent that many opponents don't want to try and take his belt from him. He's, he's too beautiful left hand there. As he uh, timed, it, timed him coming in perfectly there. Absolutely. Step back on a small angle and then lunged forward with a slightly overhand left that caught Amagasa. Seems, it seems like Amagasa has actually fallen into the trap that we hoped he wouldn't do earlier. He is falling into range now rather than setting up his approach. Yes. And I, it may, some of this may be fatigue. I don't think that he can, throwing his weight forward with his shots like that, he can't recover in time to get away from two and three punches that Rigondeaux's throwing back at him. Rigondeaux has firmly re-established himself as the leader of this fight. A couple of nice punches to begin the tenth round there. Definitely, but of course, Rigondeaux is the consummate ring general, and I do think that as soon as he has got a hold on your style, uh, he Beautiful. will do whatever he likes, basically, and I think maybe after the round where he was knocked down twice, he had seen everything that Amagasa had to offer, and therefore he wasn't going to get hurt again. He doesn't appear like he's going to get hurt again now. Amagasa now is very much on the defensive. 
see if we got a right hook left hand here from Rigondeau because he's, he's, he's doing what he does so often in playing games with his opponent where he'll throw one right hook without a setup, another right hook without a setup. You get to thinking, how could he possibly throw another one? He does it and then falls it with a blistering left hand. He loves to kind of do the same movement four or five, sometimes six times in a row. And it, it, you know, whereas with most fighters, that would that would mean an opportunity to capitalize on the pattern. For Rigondeaux, you you always feel like you're going to walk into a trap. So he does it just to taunt you. Something we see also from uh, Sanchai Sor Kingstar in the world of Muay Thai, who just loves to play around in front of his opponents and break their wills with his confidence. Definitely, it's almost like being predictable to be unpredictable. Yes, absolutely. Very well said. Rigondeaux now fighting at range. Seems to be falling back into an easier pace, but he is peppering in some very hard left hands with these pawing jabs here. Playing with the right hook. That oh. one looked like it may have stunned. Oh, and Amagasa oh, goes down. Yes. And there we see it. Rigondeaux throws the same shot twice in a row, and it, his, predi his, his predictability is so unpredictable that he drops Amagasa with the second one. Perfectly said there. He hit him once. We thought he may have stunned him. He hit him exactly the same punch again. And he's he's still going back to it now. He's going back to it. He's mixing it up now to the body. Oh my gosh, Amagasa looks, looks like a shell-shocked fighter here. Definitely. He looks hurt. He looks like he's... He really looks like he's in beyond his depth right now. Rigondeaux is just hunting him down with these shots. Yeah, and I think that knockdown might have actually done some other damage because Amagasa, both sides of his face now, appear to be under some serious pressure. Which is crazy because, as I say, Rigondeaux isn't really thought of as that hard a puncher. He's definitely respected for his accuracy and the snap and the speed uh, in which he can hit guys with. But he looks like he—he he looks like he's run over his opponent here. Yeah, staying all over him with these left hands. When when Amagasa least expects it, he'll throw a right hook like he does right there. Just like he did there. Really beautiful stuff from Rigondeaux. Shifting from hip to hip, suggesting punches. He, he's got Amagasa completely frozen in front of him. The, the best thing Amagasa could possibly... Beautiful counter left. The best thing Amagasa could possibly do at this stage in the fight is to fight back. And he's so intimidated by what Rigondeaux is showing him that he, he can't muster the courage. His face is badly disfigured. Looks like he has a, a, a serious, serious contusion on his left cheek. Giant mouse that's starting to swallow his right eye does not look in good shape as he sits in the corner waiting for the 11th round. There was a perfect shot there from Rigo at the end of the round. He, he held out a lazy jab and just as Amagasa drops his weight into position to land a right hand over it, Rigo was already ready to throw a left hook over the top or rather an overhand left over the top and just caught him bending over into the shot. Just, just classic boxing there. You don't tend to see boxing like this nowadays. I mean, Rigon Dale uses feints like most modern boxers would not know how to use. He's very much an old school classical stylist in that respect. Absolutely. Playing with rhythm too, that's one of the things that Rigon Dale excels at, is, is sort of getting you to believe that he's moving at a much slower tempo than he really is. See this pawing jab as he starts to flick it out, he's moving at one pace, and then when you least expect it, he will explode with two or three lightning fast punches. It's very difficult to time him. Soft left hand there, fakes another one, playing with it, and then a lightning oh. fast right uppercut that rocks Amagasa's head back. Beautiful lead uppercut there, and it's not a punch we've seen from, from Rigo very often. As, as we said earlier, he was using the same moves, show, giving Amagasa the same looks, and then brought another punch into his arsenal, which 11 rounds into the bout must be very, very shocking for a fighter as badly injured as Amagasa seems. But... Funnily enough, even though he is on the defensive, he has come out for this round, and he is still trying. He's still putting forth an effort, throwing single shots now without setting him up, but he is putting forth that effort. Typical Japanese warrior spirit here. Again, we've I've rolled out a few cliches as we called this bout, but Amagasa looks very much the prototype for the Japanese fighter. He's not quite as skilled as, as even some of his contemporaries, and certainly not some of the great uh, title challenges or champions we've seen from the past, but he's right on par with them in terms of his fighting spirit and his heart. Absolutely. Very well said. Amagasa now starting to push Rigondeaux back, but you know, as we see Rigondeaux fainting and shifting from side to side, Amagasa just cannot feel confident throwing anything on Rigondeaux at this point after having now gone through two rounds of 
brutal punishment, and he's being rocked back on his heels by nearly every shot that Brigandau throws. Even ones that land in his glove seem to be staggering him. It looks like a vicious body shot from Brigandau. It looks like Amagasa's legs might be pretty weak at this stage in the fight. Brigandau now pouring it on, maybe trying to get a finish here in round 11. Brigandau used a very nice kind of half jab just on the shoulder uh, a few sequences ago to move Amagasa into position. He doesn't even need to snap the jab out as we would expect him to. He just gives him a gentle nudge just to move him into position. Uh, if you ask me, I think he is now... You see there, it was quite half-hearted. I think he sees a, a wounded animal in front of him and he does seem to be easing back a little bit. I may be wrong. Uh, you don't expect sportsmanship out of people all the time. These guys are fighters, but at the same time, Amagasa looks very badly injured and, and Regan Dow does appear to have eased back slightly. And at this point, at the end of the 11th round, you have to wonder if, if Amagasa can even manage another three minutes in there with Rigondeaux. And that's it. That's and it. They've waved it off. No surprise. Looks like the corners decided to stop the fight. Rigondeaux, showing that sportsmanship you were just talking about, immediately goes over, perhaps to console Amagasa, but I have to imagine he's also thanking him for such a, a stiff challenge, an unexpectedly tough fight. And you know that the Japanese fans, as they always have in combat sports, appreciate fighters doing what Amagasa just did today. He went out on his shield. He really did. He looks disconsolate in there. And you could be sure that the corner pulled him out because I think that he would have went on even to the end of the bell. He looks devastated. He hasn't lasted to the end, but he should definitely be proud of his performance against a fighter who is in everybody's top five pound-for-pound -pound fighters. Absolutely. He knocked down twice one of the pound-for-pound -pound greatest fighters in the sport today and the lineal champion of the division in which Amagasa is not even ranked. So it's, it's, it's definitely an impressive performance that he just turned in. Highly impressive performance. And one thing I like to say, Connor, is that if Rigondeaux's fellow titleists do not wish to take him on, then I wouldn't mind seeing Amagasa getting a chance against a Scott Quigg or a Carl Frampton or possibly even a Santa Cruz. Right, it does a lot for Amagasa's stock. It, it, this is a name-making fight for him. He's a fighter that no one will have heard of, but hardcore boxing fans around the world now uh, have him have him written down as a fighter to watch. And he really does look torn up here in the corner, but I really think, I hope he can look back in this performance with pride in the near future because that was absolutely, uh, you know, nobody expected that from Amagasa. He did more than anyone could have expected. Really turned in an excellent show here tonight. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like we'll get a chance to see a replay of that knockdown, but um, really a, an impressive performance from Amagasa. And I think he brought the best out of uh, a fighter as amazing as Guillermo Rigondeaux. Yeah, and for a fighter who's struggled to get fights, perhaps Rigondeau will find himself back in Japan soon. Yeah, and, and, and it looks like the fans there appreciate him, so uh, I, I think all of us would, would at least like to see Guillermo Rigondeau fighting somewhere where people want to see him fight. He hasn't gotten the love he deserves here in the Western Hemisphere, so uh, good good for Rigondeau, good for Amagasa. Hopefully he heals up soon and uh, can look back on that performance with pride. Thanks, everybody, once again for joining us here for Bad Left Hook Commentary. This was Guillermo Rigondeau versus Hisashi Amagasa. Thank you very much for joining us once again. I'm Connor Rebush with me, Kyle McLaughlin, and we will see you again for another exciting international fight in the near future.